In this experiment, we are going to be making some calcium hydroxide by doing a double displacement reaction. By adding two reactants, calcium acetate and sodium hydroxide, they will produce the two products, calcium hydroxide and sodium acetate. The reason I am doing this experiment is because I need the calcium hydroxide to make ammonia, which I will do in a later video. I would also like to thank Jenny, a wonderful artist, who made my profile picture. I have attached her Instagram account in the description below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment feedback. Now let's get started. In this experiment you will need sodium hydroxide and calcium acetate. I'm using the calcium acetate I used in my last video. The first thing I'm going to do is weigh out the calcium acetate so I know how much sodium hydroxide I need to add. As I said previously, I'm using the calcium acetate I made in my last video, where I made calcium acetate out of oyster shells. I have attached the link for that video in the description below. I have 53 grams of reactant. I am now going to dissolve that in around 300 millilitres of distilled water. 300 millilitres of water is more than what is needed since sodium acetate is highly soluble. Add the stir bar and turn on. Once it has all been dissolved, turn off. You can now see that there is no undissolved reactant. As you can see, I started with 53 grams of calcium acetate and I found this website that does the stoichiometry calculation results. I really like using this website and I'll put the link of the, in the description below and maybe in the future I'll do a video on how to work out notebook stoichiometry calculations. According to the stoichiometry calculation results, I require 26.8 grams of sodium hydroxide. I will now use a beaker and weigh 26.8 grams of sodium hydroxide. I'll have to ensure that it is cleaned properly so there isn't any cross contamination. Here I am using a magnet to get out the stir bar. I then put the stir bar into a little plastic container and rinse down with water. I then use an old t-shirt to dry the stir bar. I'm now going to dissolve 26.8 grams of sodium hydroxide in 70 millilitres of distilled water. 70 millilitres of water is way more than I need because the solubility of sodium hydroxide at 25 degrees is 50 millilitres. This is an exothermic reaction, meaning that as the sodium hydroxide dissolves, it can get quite hot. Stir until the sodium hydroxide is completely dissolved. You may observe that this is an exothermic reaction as steam is being given off and because it's quite hot to touch. Continue stirring until the sodium hydroxide is dissolved. The liquid will become transparent. Once it is transparent, turn off the stirrer. Once both the reactants are dissolved, I then prepare adding them together. I'm just going to swap and place the larger beaker onto the stirrer. Carefully add the dissolved sodium hydroxide solution to the 300 millilitres of calcium acetate solution. And you can observe the reaction. This is a double displacement reaction. This type of reaction in which two reactants change ions to form two new compounds. One of the compounds you can see forming is calcium hydroxide. This is the white clumpy looking compound that precipitates as a solid out of the solution. The other compound is sodium acetate, which is highly soluble and remains in the solution. To ensure that this reaction is fully complete, stir thoroughly. Off camera, I used a glass rod to stir more vigorously. We are now going to separate the calcium hydroxide, which is the white precipitate, at the bottom of the beaker. The best way I found to do this is to leave it overnight to allow the two products to separate. Ensure it is kept in a safe place. Carefully pour the sodium acetate into a separate beaker. Now to separate the remainder of the calcium hydroxide, I used a cloth filter. Don't forget to prime it before by running some water through it. Pour all of it into the filter. This is a pretty slow process and will take overnight to filter. Ensuring that all the product is being collected, rinse the sides of the beaker then pour into the filter. Repeat this process as many times as needed. This will also help to wash out the sodium acetate. I'm now doing my final rinse by squirting water around the edges of the filter. In these two beakers, there's all the sodium acetate that has been filtered off from the sodium hydroxide. In the first 
beaker, I have a small quantity that I will use to determine if the reaction is completed. The way I determine if the reaction is complete, I dissolve a small quantity of sodium hydroxide. I then add the remaining sodium acetate, roughly about the same volume to the separate beaker, and then combine the two solutions. I then observe, if the solution turns white, the reaction is incomplete. In this case, I can tell the reaction is complete. After leaving the calcium hydroxide overnight in the cloth filter, I'm now going to remove it and dry it. Overnight, some more sodium acetate separated. Gently take it all out, collecting as much product as possible. I will now pour sodium acetate into a container to dry and crystallise. I'll also replace the large container of calcium hydroxide to dry. Leave overnight. Here's my product of calcium hydroxide. Note the stereo bar is still in there. And here is my sodium acetate. The final thing left for me to do is crush and weigh. Gently crush until a powder. Gently pour into the scales, remembering to press tar. Pour slowly to minimise dust. I have the final yield of 33.51 grams of calcium hydroxide. This is really weird because the stoichiometry calculations had my predicted yield as 24.8 grams. Unfortunately, because it took me so long to get this video completed, I lost my notes on what the sodium acetate yield was. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment feedback.